Welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. I'm Jacob, and this video covers the three bank accounts you have as a helicopter pilot. Now, I use the term bank accounts because if all three are full, you're rich and you have options, just like in life. If you're broke, you don't have very, op very many options and you're stuck with really what you have. Now, in the world of flying, this could mean the difference in between life and death. So let's see what the three bank accounts are. Now, some people talk about it as your three buckets, three bank accounts. Really, it's all the same. It's just teaching the analogy here. Now, the first one is going to be power available. In this case, we'll say from zero to 100% power available. Next is gonna be altitude. And that's gonna be your above ground level or AGL altitude. Last one is going to be airspeed. That's self-explanatory, uh, the speed that the aircraft is traveling. Now, these balances vary in each part of the flight. They'll fluctuate in each of the accounts. Pilots can build these accounts, you can trade energy between these accounts, or simply give up what's already in these accounts. For instance, when I'm on the ground and I start from zero airspeed, zero altitude, I should have a high power available. That is, I don't have any power applied, so the available power is all the way up to 100%. So let's say that I'm getting started here, and I've got my helicopter on the ground, and I want to take off and get established in straight level flight up here. As I pull in my power, I'm reducing my power available account. Uh, let's say I need 80% to do this takeoff. Well, that only gives me 20% left in the power available account, but I start building my altitude and airspeed accounts. Now, once I'm leveled off in flight, let's say I'm at 2,000 feet AGL, uh, max rate of climb, endurance, airspeed, and pulling roughly 55% on the torque. Well, this gives us some options here. I've got nice, healthy bank accounts in all of them. Let's say, you know, roughly all of them are sitting somewhere around here, 50%. I can pull from all three of them if I need. My altitude of being 2,000 feet, if anything were to happen, I can reduce altitude. I also have time because I'm, I'm higher in the air. My max rate of climb airspeed, I've got reduced amount of drag on the aircraft. I'm very streamlined. I've got a good, healthy airspeed. I'm not, you know, cresting less than ETL or anything like that. But it's uh, you know, a nice low power setting required to main maintain this. Um, and it's also airspeed that if I needed to trade off or anything, I could. Now, I have these high ba bank accounts um, in this situation, healthy in all three. Now, I mentioned earlier how these bank accounts could mean the difference in between life and death. And that's because these are the accounts that you can pull from if you get into danger. That is, emergencies that pop up or anything unanticipated um, during the flight. So let's say you have an engine failure. Well, if you're in this flight profile, you have time and options. Engine failure means the power available bank account is just gone if you're a single engine aircraft, or it's reduced if you're in a dual engine helicopter. Um, having the other two bank accounts allow you to increase the options as far as where can you go, how long do you have in the air to make a decision. Now let's compa compare the same scenario to a helicopter over at treetop level. So let's say we've got some trees over here And I've got my helicopter, I'm operating over here at roughly 150 feet AGL, five to 10 knots, and 95% power. Um, if I were to have my engine fail, I'm right in the height of void area or the dead man's curve and the likelihood of, success of a successful safe landing is very, very unlikely. If you're not familiar with the height of void area or the dead man's curve, check that out. I got a whole video that outlines it. Simply put, the likelihood of recovering from an engine failure in this area is very, very unlikely. Um, but let's say I have a, a loss of tail rotor. The tail rotor just goes out or I experience loss of tail rotor effectiveness, the wind condition. I don't really have any options if I'm low. Um, if I'm higher and faster, well, one, um, the required anti-torque required to maintain uh, my heading is lower because I'm, um, I have a higher forward airspeed and the vertical fin or vertical fins offset the need for the tail rotor when I'm faster. I can also um, give up possibly some of this altitude to accelerate or dive into forward flight to get that airspeed to arrest and try to fly out of some sort of loss of tail rotor condition. But let's say I'm in this scenario here where I'm at treetop level. If I lose a tail rotor or experience loss of tail rotor effectiveness, I really don't have any options here. I'm just kind of compromising between my rate of turn and rate of descent, and I'm going right below the helicopter here. I don't really have any options. Same thing for engine failures. I'm going straight down. I don't really have any options. Here, I have 
I have time to react. I can get into an auto. I can accelerate, decelerate, adjust speeds as necessary. I have a lot of options here. Um, another situation could be what happens if you're flying along at nighttime and your night vision goes out. Um, if I'm low, slow, and there's potential ha hazards or obstacles along the way, I can't really pull in an extra power. I've only got 5% here. I can't really trade off any of this airspeed to get up, and I don't really have altitude to give up. I'm really just kind of stuck to whatever kind of power margins I have, and I'm going to be very slow to get out of that environment and troubleshooting my night vision failure. Whereas if I'm up in altitude, I'm probably above a lot of these obstacles, and I have a little bit of time, a little bit of leeway to, to troubleshoot through any kind of um, issue that I'm having in the helicopter. But having healthy full bank accounts give you options. Now I can trade airspeed to gain altitude with cyclic climbs. I can also trade altitude to gain airspeed um, with different rates of uh, or varying degrees of dives. If I have power available, I can gain airspeed, altitude, or arrest rates of descent just by pulling in more collective. It's all energy management. Think back to basic physics. All energy is either potential or kinetic. So airspeed is kinetic. It's just the raw mechanical motion of the helicopter moving. Altitude is a potential energy, specifically gravitational. Like a roller coaster, the higher you are, the more time and distance gravity can act on you and pull you down. Power available is also potential energy. It's chemical because it's stored in the fuel tanks that the engines burn to turn the drive system, which turns the main rotor, which you can use to charge up the other bank accounts. Um, so you may not always be in a uh, position where you can fly with optimum bank accounts in all three. So what happens if you find yourself in a situation where uh, the type of job or the mission mandates that you have a deficit in one of these accounts. So more specifically, let's say you have to operate low. There's just no way around it. Your job says you got to do it. Well, consider mitigating it by increasing my other bank account. So if I have to be low, maybe I try to increase airspeed. Keep it above effective translational lift. Keep it above a single engine capability. Um, get a little bit faster to offset the, um, the drag. Get lower power required. Uh, Another thing I can look at is reduce my power uh, or increase my power available. In that case, you know, how much weight do I really need to bring in this helicopter today? Can I reduce my weight and give myself a little bit more power available? Think about how to improve this, this situation. What happens if I'm in an environment where I have to operate slow? Just no way around it. Well, if I'm in that case, maybe increase my altitude. If I increase my altitude, I can give myself some time. If something were to go wrong, I can give some forward cyclic and accelerate into airspeed and get into a safer flight condition. Just like last time, I should also try to increase my power available, reducing weight, doing what I can to not operate um, as close to that uh, or give myself more of a margin in that power available. Lastly, what happens if, that, if I have to operate um, in an environment where I'm power limited? Maybe I'm high up in the mountains, the air is thinner, um, or I'm just operating right at my max gross weight. I have to. I just have to put all this weight on the helicopter. Well, consider things like increasing your altitude and increasing your airspeed to give yourself some options by having the other two bank accounts full. Um, <clears throat> ultimately, a uh, an option is or a, a way to look at it is that uh, you need these bank accounts to trade back and forth. If you have any kind of emergencies, these can, can save your life. And if you don't have them, you just don't have any options to pull from. Now, a great quote by Frank uh, Borman states that a superior pilot uses superior judgment to avoid situations that require the use of superior skill. It's all the judgment piece that comes into thinking ahead of the aircraft, both while you're flying and in the, the flight planning portion. But this is all energy management. If I have to operate uh, and this helicopter, I should always try to get my three bank accounts as full as possible. It's just going to be safer. It's going to be a better flight profile to be in. But if I am limited, how can I kind of offset that by increasing my other bank accounts? Because aircraft issues will always happen. It's only a matter of time if you haven't had one yet. And so giving yourself the amount of either time or options or anything like that can help to safely recover this aircraft. But that wraps up this video. It's about all the time I have. Once again, the three bank accounts are power available, altitude, and airspeed. They can be used to save your life in a bad situation if you have them. Uh, if you don't, you're left with the situation that you have. They can be built, traded, or given up. But thanks for watching. Be sure to hit like, subscribe, and leave a comment. As always, this is Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. I'm Jacob. See you.